Hey everyone, welcome back to The Machine Project. So today and tomorrow, we're gonna to get started on our next project checkpoint, MP1. And this is our first chance together to add some functionality to our app. Um, so we're gonna fix a few bugs, uh, but we're also, the focus of this checkpoint is enabling the search bar. So if you've experimented with your app a little bit in the emulator, which I encourage you to do, you may have noticed that the search bar doesn't work. I can type stuff in it, but nothing happens. There's no effect on the places that are shown in the UI. So in this checkpoint in MP1, we're gonna fix that. Um, we're also gonna talk a little bit more about how certain aspects of the app work to prepare ourselves for later checkpoints. Um, but our goal over the next couple of lessons is gonna be to get the search bar to work. Now, part of that is a task that you should be pretty familiar with by this point because it's essentially a small homework problem sort of embedded in the MP and relies on a lot of the things you already know how to do with Kotlin. However, uh, there is a new idea there, which is kind of exciting. We're gonna see that in just a minute. Um, but also, the next part is working with Android UI, and that is something that I suspect is unfamiliar to you, and pretty cool. So we'll talk a little bit about sort of how to set up our activity so that it can actually handle changes to the search bar and do the right thing by updating the UI. So we'll get there. The first thing we're gonna do though is we're gonna start off by configuring our project to start work on MP1. So I've got my copy of the, uh, of the starter code that I've been working on alongside uh, with all of you. And at this point, you should be done with MP0. So I'm gonna go ahead and, and run the grader here. Um, and it should spit out the score for MP0 of 100. And you should also have committed that score and earned full credit. Uh, so I'm gonna open up the commit dialog in a minute um, and make sure that you know I'm all done with MP0. Now I'm starting to think maybe I forgot to do that. Um, but okay, so I've got full credit. Uh, let's go over to the commit dialog. Uh, okay, I, I don't need to worry about this, but this is fine. Um, I'll just save this for the next commit. This is a change to a configuration file that I'm not worried about. Okay, so, well actually, let's go ahead and just do it. I'll say, uh, check style uh, configuration. I'm just gonna commit this um, and not push it for now. Uh, mainly just because I want my working tree to be clean. So in Git, sometimes what we talk about is a state where uh, your files are in, your repository is in, where there's no changes compared to your last commit. So if you open up the commit dialog here and you see there's no changes, that's great. That can be a good place to start from when you're doing things like adding a file to your project, which is what we're about to do. So MP0, we use MP0 test suites. For MP1, we need to uh, get a copy of the MP1 test suites. Now, these have been provided to you in some way, maybe over email, maybe via the website, um, but you should have downloaded a file called mp1test.kt, and we need to move that into the right spot in our project. And this is something that, for some of you more younger digital natives who aren't as familiar with files and uh, how things work kind of under the hood on your computer, this may be one of the more difficult parts of getting started is just figuring out, look, how do I copy the file to the right place? It's not that hard though. I'll show you how to do it on a Mac. Um, there's other ways to do it on Windows, but we'll get there. And the course staff's available to help if you need. Uh, so you'll see over here, there's this, this is actually a directory. Uh, it's displayed a little bit in the Android Studio UI, a little bit differently. These are just files. This is a directory on my computer. And I've downloaded the um, MP1 test suite. I've got it over here in my downloads folder. And what I want to do is get it over into that directory I'm pointing. It's like, I'll point with the maps. Get it over here. Um, and so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to pick this up and very carefully, uh, using two fingers, I'm just going to... Uh, drag it over here into the right place and let go. Um, and let's see, and it says this file does not belong to the project. Uh, and I'll hit, let's see here, uh, maybe that, let's see if that did the right thing. I'll say, oh yeah, I said okay. And then it says move, I don't know why that dialog comes up first. That's weird. Uh, but it says move file mp1test.kt and I'm going to put it in this directory. Okay. now. One important note about Git is that when you're working with Git and you add a file to your project, Git will not automatically track the changes to that file. You have to add it explicitly. You sort of kind of tell Git, hey, keep an eye on that file for me. And after that point, it'll do it. 
but it doesn't do it by default. Now, Android Studio is smart enough that when you add a file to your project in the way that we just did, it opens up this dialog saying, hey, do you wanna commit this file to Git? And the answer is yes, I wanna hit add. Now, if I forget to do this, let's say you just click cancel because you love clicking on buttons and you just click on them at random, um, you can go over here and click, right click on this, go to Git and hit add, that also works. Okay, now, I'm looking at the MP1 test suites. And one of the things that I'm gonna adjust my display a little bit to make sure you can all see this because I know that my face is like up, up there somewhere in that corner. Uh, so let me just try to grab this and like pull it down a little bit, which is not letting me do, please. Maybe let me resize the window, is that a thing? Okay, um, yeah, let me pull this down just a little bit so you can make sure you can see up here. So one of the really cool things about a tool, you know, you've been writing code in these little editors on the website and that's really good for learning because it forces you to do some of these things by hand and learn how to do them instinctively and naturally. But tools like Android Studio are incredibly powerful, sophisticated um, tools for allowing you to examine your code and figure out what's wrong. And Android Studio knows a lot about your code and about what potential problems might be. So the, one of the ways it tries to communicate with you is over here, uh, there's two places. So this is up at the top, right? It's saying there's some errors and typos. And then it's saying there's unresolved references in this file. And this will happen uh, to, again to us when we start MP2 uh, and then later on MP3, typically when we get a new test file, what's happening is the testing suite is expecting us to have new methods or new classes or new capabilities in our code that may not be there yet. And so what we're gonna to do together is we're gonna add what's called a stub that's gonna allow us to just put in some starter code, put in a little bit of code that doesn't do anything, it doesn't solve the problem, but it allows these compilation errors to go away because these are compiler errors. So if I hit F2, it'll take me to the first one right here and then F2 again, uh, and you'll see that there's a problem here. Um, now, watch carefully because this is introducing a new uh, idea in Kotlin that we are going to talk about in more detail on the next lesson. But for now, we need to make a very specific change to our, uh, and I'm going to make this over here in models.kt. So I'm going to open up models.kt. Right now, this is pretty simple, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to add a search method. Now, there's a couple of different ways that I could have written this search method. I could have written it like this. I could have written it to take um, a list of places, um, sorry, list, place, and then uh, a search string, uh, and then yield a list of places. That would work, I could just return places. Um, however, Kotlin has this cool feature that we're, I wanna introduce to you because it's really neat. Uh, which is called extension methods. So if I was uh, gonna write the search this way, I would have to call it by passing my list and the search uh, term like this. But in Kotlin, one of the cool things that we can do is we can actually add methods to an existing class, even if the class is not a class that we own. And we don't have to put those methods on the class with the rest of the code, we can add them in other places. This is a feature of Kotlin called extension methods, and it's pretty neat. Um, okay, so here's the traditional way of doing this. Here is the syntax for this extension method approach that what is what we're gonna use, and it's what the test suite is expecting to happen. Um, so I'm gonna write, let me just, I'll show you the syntax of this. Um, okay, I'm gonna have to comment this one out because uh, it turns out from the JVM's perspective, these have the same signature, um, and that's what that uh, error message I was just seeing is, is complaining about. So this is weird, right? This is new syntax, as we have not seen this before. There are some things here that look should look familiar. We are, have our fun keyword. Um, we have something that looks like a method declaration, but this is new. And so what this is doing is it's defining a extension method on a list of places. So now whenever I have a list of places, if I import this extension method, I can call it on that list as if it was provided by that class, right? So instead of this syntax, right, which is given a list of places, I call search, I pass the list and the search term, I can do this. I can do list.search and then pass the search term, right? This is search string. I probably should have called this something else. Oh, let's just call it search string. 
all this sort of string just to de disambiguate here. So that's my, my fault. Naming is important, right? So, and, and this I just like about Kotlin. I think it's cool. Uh, and so I wanted to share it with you on this MP and we'll talk a little bit about it in the next lesson and, and sort of, uh, now you might be wondering, what is this inside an extension method? I'm not inside a class. I'm inside this method with a sort of strange signature. This refers to this list of places. So this is almost as if, like you can think of, you know, imagine I have my list class here and this is not correct Kotlin syntax. Um, and then I have, you know, methods like size, right, that I can usually use. And now I have this extra method called search uh, that I'm able to add that returns a list of places. And now, because it's on this class, you know, returning this might make a little bit more sense. But this is the same thing. Cosmic, Kotlin allows me to use this inside an extension method and return to the, and refer, excuse me, to the list of places that the method is being called. Okay, more on that soon. Although, I actually said quite a bit about it already. Um, all right, so if I go back to mp1.test, you'll see that that error is gone. Now, up here, there are still some typos, and this is my fault. I should have turned these off. Maybe I actually will turn these off before I provide it to you. I hate stuff like this. Oh, on all the green check marks. Um, and these aren't actually typos. These are just part of the test suite, and they should, this error shouldn't be here. So by the time you get this, it's possible this will be gone, uh, which would be great. Um, all right, so we are, we are ready to start uh, testing MP1. Um, so let's go up here. Uh, there's, and there's a couple of ways to get started with this. Let me uh, make this big again. Um, so what I want is I want something similar to what I have for test MP0. There's a couple ways to get that. Let me show you the easiest one. I go up here, I hit this green arrow on the MP1 class, and then I run MP1 test. Now, if this fails with a compilation error, then you didn't, you, you made some mistake in that set of changes that we just completed. Because if you don't make those changes and you try to run the test suite, the project won't compile. That's why we had to put in this little placeholder, right? So this is not a correct implementation of the search method. You'll have to do that uh, later. Um, this is just enough to get the test suites to run so that they can fail. All right, so test suites are running, great. Um, now, if you submitted this code right now, so let's run the grader and see what happens. Well, actually, for the first thing I wanna do, let's go over here and we're going to do two things because I have borderline and maybe not so borderline OCD. I'm going to rename this to test MP1. I'm going to click this button, which adds it to my repository. So now if I clone this on another machine, this run configuration comes along with the code, which is kind of nice. I'm going to hit apply and then I'm going to move this into the right spot because again, the borderline OCD thing. Okay. So now this is good, but let's go ahead. Let's click okay. And now let's go ahead and click on the grader. What's gonna happen here is that the grader is still grading MP0. So when I run the grader, what I expect to see is actually a score for MP0. Um, and actually, uh, there's no detect errors, um, and I, I see the score for MP0. Before you submit for MP1, you need to make this small change we're about to do together. So you tell us, what are you submitting for? Like, what checkpoint are you actually working on right now? Um, so again, I'm in the project view over here. If you're in the Android view, you probably need to switch to the project view to see this file. I'm gonna go down here, I'm gonna open up grade.yaml, and I'm gonna make small change, add checkpoint one, right? Run the grader again, and now you'll see that the grader is going to run the uh, grading tasks for uh, checkpoint one. And I failed the test, but I did get 10 points because I haven't introduced any uh, detect errors yet. So that's great. Um, and at this point, let's commit our, and push our work so that we have an official starting point for MP1 that we can build off of uh, as we continue. All right, so I'm gonna close out all these files. I'm gonna go over here to my commit dialog. Now, you'll see I made changes to grade.yaml. I made changes to models.kt. I added this uh, search method as an extension method on the list of places. And then I added MP1 test. That file is green to indicate that it's new. It didn't exist in the last commit. I added it. You'll also see down here unversioned files. And this is something that you want to keep an eye on as you continue because what this means is there was something that was added to the repository, but git add wasn't called on it. And you'll see that this um, new uh, run configuration that I added was not added to the uh, project properly. I don't know why Android Studio doesn't do this correctly, but I'm gonna click on these and I'm gonna click on these changes and I'm gonna say getting started on MP1. So if I click on the unversioned files, 
um, that will add those files to, um, I believe that adds the files to the, to, to the repository. All right, so I'm, I'm gonna hit commit and push. Uh, yeah, commit anyway and push. These checks are, are annoying um, and I'll hit push. Right. And this is kind of telling me what's happening. I'm adding this run configuration. Um, oh, there were, there were actually two commits that I'm pushing, right? So this is an interesting case because I'm pushing two commits. Remember, I made that initial one where I was just something changed with one of the configurations. But this is the one that contains my current work on MP1. It's got the test suites. It's got my update to the models.kt file. And it's got that new run configuration that I added. So let's push those changes. And if I went to the website in a minute, I will see that I've earned 10 points on MP1. So we're off to a great start. Um, throughout the rest of this lesson, we'll uh, talk about kind of how data flows through our app, which is pretty cool. And that'll put us in a position to uh, work on the first test case and fix one of the small problems that we have uh, with how the app is currently working.